Hey class, welcome back. Today, Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be talking kiln safety and things you gotta know. So diving into the kiln safety itself, let's talk about the kiln room. Now my kiln room is a simple brick lined structure, got double doors on it. Most kiln rooms have a single door, some have a double door, some have two doors, depending on where you, what kind of setup your building has. At the end of the day, my personal view is if you have a kiln in its own room, it's a lot safer than anywhere else. Case in point, I have a lot of elementary friends who they're they have an old old building and because they have an old building they have a boiler room in it and in the boiler room that's where they have the kiln it's off and it's in a remote location there's no access to it except for um the usually the head custodian and the art teacher who has a key to it and it keeps it relatively secure safe nobody's going to bother I like that in that it's secure it's safe it's by itself but I don't like that it's so far away from the art teacher that moving the wear from the art room all the way to the boiler room to use the kiln that becomes a lot more of a uh, of a hassle because you're having to transport that greenware that could be bone dry and really super fragile on a cart over bumps and pavement and whatnot to that room and it's just that's not a good idea personally i like to have the kiln in the in the art classroom or uh, you know right next to the art classroom so it makes transfer of the material a lot easier for uh to ensure that the safety of the piece however i also have friends who have the kiln in the classroom literally it's next to desk uh and somebody because they thought it was a good idea you can buy these basically it's a fabric partition that you can put around the kiln for safety reasons i fully understand why they have those but at the same time I would almost rather not use the kiln at all if it was in the classroom with me, just because of what we're about to go over. Let's dive into some of the safety things. Now, first off, let's go ahead and, and, and rip the bandaid off of the most controversial aspect of this entire video. And that's gonna be, which is gonna be, do you fire during school or do you fire after school? Me, I'm in the camp of firing after school. Now that's because I have a digital kiln. When I had a manual kiln, I would only fire that during school hours. Reason being, because if it's a manual kiln, kiln you have to sit there and babysit those little dials until the kiln has reached the proper temperature i have a whole video going over how to how to fire a manual kiln i also have a video going over how to fire a digital kiln so check those out it's in the ceramic playlist hit those things up and get and learn get some knowledge now with that said let's go over some of the caveats firing a manual kiln during the classroom day is problematic for a couple reasons one the gases and and items that are being emitted from the kiln is hazardous i did a lot of research for this video also now as i said before the kiln as it's firing is venting off several things the kiln's heat isn't the only safety concern toxic volatiles are often released during fuel burning carbon dioxide when firing sol soluble metal salts sulfur dioxide and during reduction firing carbon monoxide now most of this i will say is for a reduction kiln firing which is a gas kiln firing that is not an electric kiln however you still have some things that are being released into the air during an a electric kiln firing a case in point when you are firing a bisque fire and most of us who have electric kilns or electric kilns in general are used for the bisque firing stage across the board even when i was firing gas kilns in college with my professor he had us firing an electric kiln for all the bisque wear not in the gas kiln and main reason is i don't want to waste a whole bunch of gas just to par bake our, our ceramic wear, uh, so wanted to do that in the electric kilns. With the electric kiln, you aren't gonna have a combustible element in there, so there's nothing that's gonna be set on fire. However, the kiln, the clay, as it starts to leach out all of the chemical changes, is going from the physical state of a wa water-soluble substance to a fired, vitrified state, which is where you can put water in it, it's not gonna break down at all you're changing the chemical formulation of that clay body meaning the physical bonds at the chemical the molecular level all that water is being pulled out and being solidified by the silica in the kiln now also you're going to have some of the silica leach out one of the big thing big things that i saw over several different schools that i've been to during the firing process that silica is going to leach out of the kiln it's actually etched the glass if you have one of those doors if you have one of those doors where it's got the chicken wire and it's got the glass in there and you wonder why it looks like it's been scratched it's the silica eating the glass 
because of the kilns firing. So number one, that's like one main reason why I don't like to fire during the school day because if I have to go in there and I have to breathe that, I definitely want to have a mask on. Um, it's kind of interesting now because we're all in masks. But uh, being able to, but having to go into that room and having to breathe that air, knowing what's in the air, I don't want to be in there with it. And then if you're doing a glaze firing, that's where you get with this sulfur oxide where you're having the vapor elements coming off of the glazes and you're breathing those elements in as well. So you have a lot of different things that are going to be in the air that are toxic and you just don't want to be around it. So it's in same thing when while we talk about making sure that when you're working it on a clay table that you're keeping everything wet and you're wiping things down because you don't want that dust to kick up because that is uh, silica dust that you're breathing into your lungs, which is again, a big problem down the road. Knowing all of those things ahead of time makes it to where you can make the decisions that you want to make. All right, so other side of the coin now, I like to fire at night. Big problem with that is you're turning on a giant oven and you're leaving the house. Yeah, but let's talk about why that works for me. All right, so number one, I have a digital kiln. Most of my firings last between 36 and 48 hours. That's because that's the firing style that I do. I know the stuff that my students make. I know the stuff that I make sometimes and I make some stuff a little thicker because I want to do these like sculptural uh, mini building things. I want to do like this whole like haunted village thing. Some of that stuff is going to take a long time to go through candling. I usually candle my stuff between eight and 16 hours uh, because I want to ensure that all of the water is being baked out of the out of the subs out of the kiln uh out of my ware so i can make sure it's it's gonna go through the fire without any issues so with it being in the kiln for the candling mode that's already going to take up a day just to get to the pre-bake level then it's not even the the firing itself most bisque firings that i do last between eight and 16 hours again it really depends on the weather one of those things where people ask like how long is it going to take to fire in the kiln we got no air temperature we got no air humidity we need to know uh what the temperature is inside the building and outside the building because your vent that's going outside is also going to have air coming in that's going to have a different temperature sometimes all those things can impact the kiln itself uh do you have all your vent plugs plugged up is there uh any sort of a cross breeze that's going to change the air temperature to the bottom of the kiln which could fluctuate so because there's sometimes there's a vent hole in the bottom that'll change how the how the kiln fires there's a lot of factors that come into play but again, I like to fire mine at night because mine A lasts so long that there's no way I'm going to be able to stay in the building for more than a couple, um, you know, an eight hour school day. Uh, definitely not for 36 hours. There's also air switches, kill switches built into the digital box that can, if the temperature reaches a certain temperature, the whole thing cuts off. When you're dealing with an electric kiln, let's go over some basics of it. Electric kiln is based off, the heating structure is based off of the coils. It's just like a oven. The coil is what gets hot. As long as there's no combustible item inside of the kiln, it's not gonna catch on fire. It's gonna get really, really hot. As long as there's nothing around the outside of the kiln, then you're, again, you're gonna making preparations and making sure that everything is nice and safe. Those elements are gonna get hot. Most of the kiln types that we're firing, let's say we're do, just doing the low fire, which is the 04 to 06 to 04 range, which is from 1850 to 1950 or 1960, something like that, depending on, on your gauge. Those, that 100 range temperature over a thousand degrees is going to get super hot in there. And as long as you have a couple of those basic items in there where it's a digital kiln, um, there's nothing anywhere close to the kiln itself i myself make a three foot perimeter around my kiln nothing can cross that at all i don't like to have combustible items in there so there's no solvents there's no paper products there's nothing that could fall over and touch the kiln at all basically just make sure that there's nothing that's going to come in contact with the kiln and you're trying to take as many precautions as possible that's easy with that said, also I run a checklist of priorities that I do myself, which is um, when I make the kiln, I've made sure that the area around the kiln is clear, just said that. I make sure that the time frame, I have a firing chart, the time frame of when that firing is gonna happen, when does it start, when it should be at this phase, when should it be done? And I've done enough firings to basically know what's gonna happen when, and I can eyeball it close enough. And then I have my contact list. My contact list is, my principal, my assistant principals, everybody's in the know of when that kiln is on. 
my uh, SRO, the school resource officer, because they contact the fire department if things go sideways. Uh, and any other security personnel so that if uh, somebody's in the building and they're doing checkups late at night and they hear the, the kiln is on, they know when it's firing and what's going on. I made them all, con I've contacted them all because I've had issues in the past where we had to call the fire department. Um, we won't say how many times I set the building on fire. We'll just say that things went sideways. So what happened was uh, during one of the firings, I was going from a bisque firing to a high fire state because my kiln could take it. My kiln could go up to cone 10 and I needed to uh, test a couple things and, and was running a process. And um, I was working in a school that had two kilns and a relatively small kiln room. What they did was during the construction phase, they installed a fire sensor just off of center from the kiln itself so when the kiln gets up to a certain temperature it's gonna set the alarm off and we knew that at, at after after a few times we figured it out but what happened was that heat that heat inside that room sets off that temperature i've had several variants of freak out it's all okay everything's fine go back to your room we went through the checklist and one well, of my principals, we we set we set it up, and I, I set the fire to go, and it got to a certain temperature. I kind of knew exactly what range. It was right around, I think it was cone six. Um, so what's that like, 2100 degrees? Uh, still need to go up to 2300 degrees to get to that cone 10 range. And the fire alarms just get set off. As soon as it sets off the fire alarm in the building, it calls the fire department, and they start sending a truck out. That's why I call my SRO. My SRO can then call the fire department and say, don't worry, it's under control, we got it covered. And that made a whole lot, a whole, that makes everything a whole lot better. Um, also, when it got to that state, when you open the door, it was like being in a really bad sauna. Uh, the room itself is like 120 degrees because the heat being emitted from that kiln is so much that the vents couldn't handle it. I had two kilns in there. I only had one kiln on. I had two vent fans pulling the exhaust out of that room and I had the door closed. There was no way that that kiln was not going to set the fire alarm off. There was nothing that I could do to prevent it and make the temperature any less. And it was good to know that while I was in the building, how high, how high it would kick up and what at what temperature. And so we knew the process. If it's doing this, this is what's gonna happen. And doing that enough times, your principal becomes comfortable with what you're doing. Um, the district as a whole or, or county, wherever you work, parish in some cases, they all become comfortable with what's going on and everybody's a lot feels a lot better about these things. So don't go into this thinking that you can't do these things. Sometimes you gotta experiment and understand why these things work and what they do. I've, that's like my mantra and the way that I work in general, I experiment. I like the experimentation process. I'm always learning. I always wanna learn more. I never wanna stop learning. So sometimes I'll do things that are completely wrong and that shouldn't be the way that they're done, but I've learned something from that. And I'd rather gain that knowledge and have my students along that journey with me. It just makes things a lot better. On to unloading the kiln. Now, once you've fired the kiln, another safety thing that I think most people don't acknowledge right off the bat is if you have a digital kiln, it says the readout of what the temperature is in the kiln. I keep measures of mine uh, during the firing process. If I'm not there, yeah, I'm not gonna see it. Uh, but when I come back in the next day and I wanna check to make sure that the kiln is cool enough for me to handle, I usually don't open the kiln until it's between 90 and 80, de 80 degrees, 80 to 90 degrees, just because the wear is still gonna be warm to the touch. Don't open it before minimum 125 degrees because you as soon as you open it up you're taking the cool air of the room which is not going to be over 90 degrees and flooding that into the kiln so the cool air as it touches those hot pieces you're going to get cracking you're going to hear those little pops that's the glass of the glaze that's going to start to fracture if it's a bisque kiln the pieces could pop all of a sudden and then you have pieces that are broken uh, and the kids don't get their wear back and that's a big problem on its own so I always wait until the kiln is relatively completely cooled before I even go and touch it. For that, in case, uh, just in case of going in there and touching it, and I will say this from experience, make sure that you have a pair of gloves as you pull the pieces out, even if the pieces are completely cool. Why? Because if you have glaze that broke or popped during the cool down process, now you have a glass shard that will try and cut you. I speak that from experience. So. Have a nice pair of oven mitts. I got some just 
really wonderful 80s grandma oven mitts to take out the wear. I have I have welding gloves. They're just not here today. I think they're in my truck. They're probably in the truck. I know. It's, I had a barbecue thing. So as I said, make sure that you have some, some safety gloves to take out the wear with. Again, it's just to make sure that things are pulled out of the kiln safely and it's not gonna burn you, cut you or anything else. These are things to be thinking about. And finally, after all of the kiln stuff is done, the kiln is shut off. The kiln has all the wear taken out. I have my little broom that I scrape and clean my kiln out with. Don't forget to dust delicately around the coils to remove any debris that's in there again. A clean kiln is a safe kiln. Uh, as long as you're cleaning everything out and getting all those debris, the debris, the dust, the elements out of there, that's what keeps the kiln firing as safe as possible. Diving in a little bit more real quick on why we have the pieces three feet away from the kiln is because of how much heat is being radiated out of the kiln. Heat does come out of the kiln even though it is a closed bodied system. The fire brick that lines your kiln itself is called a refractory brick. This brick, no, the refractory, not, not this. This is a kiln brick. Refractory brick is that big, heavy, kind of, you build a house with that kind of brick. That's not the brick that we're talking about. The kiln brick holds a lot of that heat. So as the kiln heats up, it's being insulated by that fire brick and the fire brick is holding that heat in, but heat will escape out to the exterior. And as it's coming out, you wanna make sure that nothing around the kiln um, touches it. Like one of my principals decided to touch the side of a kiln and realized, oh, that's hot. These things happen. But because it's holding that amount of heat, it just wants me, I just want you to be extra cautious to make sure that everything around that kiln uh, is nowhere near close to the kiln because it will uh, burn it, melt it, set on fire because it'll, it'll combust outside of that kiln. Um, just be cautious. Also found this kiln checklist sheet for safety kiln, uh, safety checklist for kilns. This was on the Art of Education website. It's a pr free PDF to download. I downloaded it, printed it off, didn't cost me a dime. Um, it's a good checklist to have, especially if you just have a new building or you're checking those kiln, so you can check out to what you need. Check the wiring, choose a safe location, inspect the plug, make sure all elements in your kiln are in working order, and check the plug temperature. I didn't talk about the wires themselves. One thing that I always recommend to my new people when or uh, veteran teachers especially, if you guys have been firing for a long time and you haven't done a burn test in a minute, that's one thing you probably should do. So a burn test, a burn test is where you take a strip of paper and you tear off little sections. You, you don't need anything bigger than your thumb in each one. And you're gonna take that little strip of paper and you're gonna pop it into right underneath the element. You're gonna do that all the way down. Do, do all the way down on the interior of your kiln. Then turn the kiln on high. Um, faster it goes, is what it's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna burn the paper. That's what we want it to happen. And you wanna just leave the lid open, put the, turn the kiln on high, and just do a quick burn test where you're seeing how fast that paper starts to burn. Once you see smoke or you see it start to char up, turn the kiln off. That's all you need to know. What we're doing is we're checking to make sure that on that paper, you have a burn mark. If the paper looks completely clean, like nothing ever happened, your kiln coil could be out, and then you have to replace the coil. It's not, it's not terribly difficult to do. Um, if, I, if I can, I'll make a video on that. I don't have any kilns to replace right now, but I'll, I'll ask around. Um, it's not difficult to do, but it's one of those things where your kiln is not gonna fire as high as it should because that element section is completely blown. So it's like, it's kind of like when you have your dishwasher and you put something in front of the little tab thing that's supposed to pop out and clean the dishes. If the tab can't get in and clean the dishes, your dishes aren't clean. The kiln is gonna be kind of the same way where if it doesn't get to the full temperature, your wear is not fully baked to the full viscosity it's supposed to be and you're gonna have problems. So that could be from glazing, it could be the way the glaze is, is attaching to the wear itself. There's a lot of variables uh, at play. So if that's the case, do a burn test. Know if all the kilns, if all your pieces are working or not. 
Okay, we're gonna wrap this up, and I thought, why not wrap it up like we do when we're when we're at the beginning of the school and we're going through the ethics training? We're gonna work on unsafe practices. These are things not to do, so let's not do any of this. Items are placed in the kiln room, such as desk, chairs, cleaning products, or other items. This in particular happens over summer. Let's be honest here. You know somebody who came back in, they were opening their room up, and somebody put a desk or something on top of a kiln. Try and talk to your head custodian, your plant engineer, your principal, that doing that can break the $3,000 piece of equipment that we're all trying to keep safe. Helpful tip. Uh, kilns are moved during the cleaning process. You shouldn't move the kiln ever. Once it's set up, don't touch, don't move it. It's it's there. Don't move it. Uh, kilns damage from placing items on, against, or inside or against the kiln. I, I did a video where I went in for like five minutes on why you keep the lid up, just so that it's it stays up, locked, and nothing ever goes on top of the kiln. Safety. No, 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 no. Kilns are used as a work table. Kiln room is used as a storage area. No, we're not having summer school in the kiln room. No. Uh, no sign is posted for the kiln room. Eh. Kiln vents should turn, turn off before the cool down process is complete and the firing it takes 24 hours minimum to cool the kiln. Sometimes it just depends on the, on the process. So, uh, leave the vent on all the time i do that why because i like to have air circulating in the room makes things easier plus it's quiet it's not allowed it's not allowed i had one in college it was like the size of the ceiling you kick that thing on we can scream at each other it's just oh it was loud loved it took all the stuff out of there but it was you couldn't hear yourself or the person screaming into your next no that's just you didn't hear nothing. Uh, and last one here, just make that you have a junction box in there to for safety reasons. I, I'm a big fan of knowing where your kill switch is, which means the, the box that runs all the power into the kiln should have a big old on off lever on it. Um, I'm, mine's in the room. So if things go sideways, I can just kill the power completely. If you turn the kiln off and it's been firing, let's go over what that means. If you turn, if you cut the power and it just turns the kiln off, the elements themselves aren't really going to be damaged because it's the same as if the kiln shuts off after the firing process. All the electricity is just doesn't hit the, hit the coils anymore. Don't touch the lid because if you open the lid, you're taking the cool air and going into a hot space. Plus, if you open the lid, you'll burn your face off full on. Raiders of the Lost Ark, you'll be one of those Nazis just like raw. Um, don't, don't open the kiln lid if the kiln's been running. Make sure the kiln is completely cooled down before you touch the kiln, before you touch the lid. But if it, if it has, but if you've turned it off and it has that time to cool down, it's perfectly fine. Let it cool down on its own. Awesome guys, I hope you guys got something awesome out of today's class. Went over a bunch of material this is going to take a minute to go through. I want to make sure that it's it's concise. But I hope that this answered some of you guys' kiln safety questions. If you need to show this to the principal, your plant engineer, uh, somebody at the district office who's put planning, putting in kilns, show it to them. Get some get them other people on board. So we're all safe. We're all firing our ceramics where we're having a beautiful ceramics program. Let's go ahead and wrap up class as we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get the message out there to all of our teachers and friends that we possibly can. We want to try and engage and elevate the masses. Don't forget if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise the hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions with my classmates. As always, I'll see you guys next class. If you had a question today or something else, we can make a part two. So give me those questions and, and uh, we'll find those answers for you. Other than that, I'll see you guys next class. Until then, later guys.